Let's continue our discussion of regression and now move on to multivariable regression. This is a broad and deep topic. Our goal here is to simply scratch the surface and provide a brief overview and summary of basic concepts in multivariable linear and logistic regression. The first equation shown here is the general expression for the fitted regression line from a multiple linear regression model. This is very similar to what we had for simple linear regression, except now we have more independent variables and corresponding beta or slope coefficients. Beta 0 still represents the intercept, and beta 1 is the slope corresponding to the first independent variable. Beta 2 through beta p, where p is equal to the number of independent variables in the model, simply represent the slopes for the second through the pth independent variables. The second equation shown here is the corresponding fitted regression line for a multiple logistic regression model. As before, the linear regression model assumes that a linear association between each independent variable and the outcome of interest is reasonable and appropriate. For the logistic regression model, as before, the assumption of linearity between each independent variable and the outcome is on the log scale. Let's talk for a minute about classes of models. Simple and multiple linear regression models are part of the class of models referred to as general linear models. This class of models is characterized by a continuous response, one or more continuous and or categorical independent variables, and Gaussian errors or more formally residuals. Logistic regression does not fit in this class and is actually part of a larger class of models referred to as generalized linear models. The class of general linear models is a proper subset of the class of generalized linear models. This larger class of models can accommodate responses that are binary, counts, or survival times, and allows for a more general link function, such as the logit link discussed for logistic regression. In addition to the class of generalized linear models, there are also nonlinear models where the relationship between the slope parameters and the response variable are modeled using nonlinear functions instead of the linear functions we have talked about up until now. We will not discuss nonlinear regression beyond mentioning it here. Regardless of class of model, there are three general motivations for using a multivariable model. The first is for effect estimation. Here the primary interest is in the effect of one particular variable, say x1, but we want to account for the impact of other x variables on y. A second goal is prediction of y from a group of independent variables. Here, the primary goal is usually to develop some kind of prognostic model for use in clinical care. A third goal is exploration. Here, the goal is to simply explore relationships among multiple independent variables to determine which variables influence why. This is usually the goal when the area under study is not well understood and investigators are trying to understand interrelationships between the various independent variables and the response. The detailed steps for model building and model selection will differ depending on the primary goal of the model. However, some of the general principles are the same regardless of the motivation for modeling. In both simple linear and logistic regression, the process of evaluating the significance of the model was totally focused on the single slope coefficient in the model. With multivariable models, this becomes a two-step process. In the first step, the focus is on a global null hypothesis that simultaneously tests whether all slopes in the model are zero versus the alternative that at least one of the slopes is non-zero. If the global null hypothesis is rejected, then interest shifts to testing individual slope coefficients to determine which variables are associated with the outcome. Again, we are oversimplifying to avoid getting bogged down in details of which there are many. The process of model evaluation is complex and challenging. Some of the general modeling issues that must be addressed in building and evaluating multivariable models include 
how many variables can or should be included in the model, what criteria should be used for choosing the best model, assumption checking, when there are multiple independent variables, evaluation of assumptions can become quite complex. Model interpretation, again, in the context of multiple independent variables, model interpretation can become challenging. Let's quickly run through two examples using our familiar regression data sets, the body fat data for linear regression and the low birth weight data for logistic regression. In each case, let's look at multivariable models containing two independent variables. For the body fat data, our response, as before, is percentage body fat. We previously looked at the relationship between abdomen circumference and percentage body fat. Let's now consider height also provided in the body fat data and consider a multiple linear regression model that includes both abdomen circumference and height. Here are the multiple linear regression results. The global null hypothesis, simultaneously testing that both slope coefficients are zero, is tested by an F statistic. Here the F statistic is 274.66 with degrees of freedom equal to 2 and 249 and a p-value less than 0 0.0001, indicating a statistically significant result. We conclude that there is evidence that at least one of the population slope parameters is non-zero. Next, we proceed with individual hypothesis tests for each slope, and then summarize our results. To summarize evaluation of this model, we could report the following. Report the f-statistic for the global null hypothesis, Report the slope estimate for abdomen circumference, here equal to 0 0.6, with a p-value less than 0 0.0001. Report the slope estimate for height, here equal to minus 0.34, with a p-value less than 0 0.0001. And report the r-squared value of 0 0.69. The fitted regression line for this model is equal to minus 12.12 plus 0 0.6 times abdomen circumference in centimeters, minus 0.34 times height in inches. The proper interpretation for the slope for abdomen circumference is, for each one centimeter increase in abdomen circumference, the mean percent body fat increases by 0 0.60, holding height constant. The proper interpretation for the slope for height is, for each one inch increase in height, the mean percent body fat decreases by 0.34, holding abdomen circumference constant. The proper interpretation of the r-squared value is, 69% of the total variability observed in percentage body fat as calculated by the Brozek method is accounted for by the linear regression model based on abdomen circumference and height. The basic formulation of this two-variable model assumes that the two independent variables are additive, meaning that there is no interaction between abdomen circumference and height and their relationship to percentage body fat. A more complex model could be formulated in which an interaction is modeled. This would change the interpretation of the slopes just provided. Returning to the low birth weight data, let's consider a model with low birth weight as the outcome and two independent variables, weight at last menstrual period and smoking status during pregnancy. Here are the multiple logistic regression results. The global null hypothesis simultaneously testing that both slope coefficients are zero is tested by a G statistic. Here the G statistic is 10.33 with one degree of freedom yielding a p-value equal to 0 0.0013, indicating a statistically significant result. We conclude that there is evidence that at least one of the population slope parameters is non-zero. Next, we proceed with individual hypothesis tests for each slope, and then summarize our results. To summarize this model, we can report the following. Report the g-statistic for the global null hypothesis. Report the odds ratio for weight. 0 0.987 along with its 95% confidence interval and corresponding p-value equal to 0 0.03. Report the odds ratio for smoking status 1.97 
along with its 95% confidence interval and corresponding p-value equal to 0.04. The fitted regression line for this model is equal to 0.62 minus 0.01 times weight plus 0.68 times smoking status. The proper interpretation for the odds ratio for weight is the odds of having a low birth weight baby are 0.987 times the odds of having a normal birth weight baby for each one pound increase in weight at last menstrual period, holding smoking status constant. The proper interpretation for the odds ratio for smoking status is the odds of having a low birth weight baby among smokers is 1.97 times the odds of having a normal birth weight baby among non-smokers holding weight at last menstrual period constant. As mentioned with the multiple linear regression model, this model assumes an additive relationship between the independent variables. If we believed that more complex relationships existed, we could incorporate that structure into the model specification. This concludes our brief introduction to multiple linear and multiple logistic regression. The best advice I can provide is that when you venture into the territory of multivariable regression modeling, it's a good idea to bring along a card-carrying statistician. That's all for now.